3.8 Lesson 3, Applications of Sine and Cosine Derivatives. The objective for today's lesson is you'll be able to model a word problem with the sinusoidal model y is equal to c plus a times cosine of b times x minus d and use that model to answer questions about the problem. Vocabulary, argument, uh, we know that what we're taking cosine of that's called the argument of the function. Parameters, the parameters that we're looking at are a, b, c, and d. We know that the parameter b has an impact on the period of the function. The period of the uh, model will be 2 pi divided by the absolute value of b. We know that the parameter a has an impact on the amplitude of the graph. We know that the parameter C determines what the midline axis or the sinusoidal axis will be. We'll have the sinusoidal or the midline axis be the horizontal line y is equal to C. And we know that the parameter D determines the phase displacement. Today we'll look at this word problem for our lesson objective and we will be using what we just discussed about the parameters A, B, C, and D to help us model this word problem with the sinusoidal model having those parameters A, B, C, and D. So this is, uh, this is basically number one from the exercises but I've modified it, I've changed some of the numbers so that you can see this as an example and you would also try to do number one that is in your textbook using this example uh, to help you. So let's look at how I changed some of the values here. Uh, these are the values that I changed to give me uh, the modified version of the problem. But other than that, uh, everything is the same, but I changed these values and when you look at number one from your textbook, you'll have different values than what you're seeing here. But everything else is the same. So let's go ahead and read the problem so we can understand what this is about. This is the modified Ferris wheel problem. When you write a Ferris wheel, and here's a diagram of a Ferris wheel. So there's one, for example, at the Santa Monica Pier, Pacific Park, right? So... Uh, there's one in Irvine also, the, I think the Irvine Spectrum. Uh, and of course, whenever you have a carnival, you've seen Ferris wheels. A modified Ferris wheel, uh, well, this is a Ferris wheel. When you ride a Ferris wheel, when you ride a Ferris wheel, your distance in feet from the ground. So here's the ground. You can see the ground here, right? This is the ground. Okay, so that's the ground. Your distance measured in feet from the ground varies sinusoidally with time t in seconds since the wheel started rotating. And that's something that we can all understand intuitively. When you're at the very top of the Ferris wheel, you'll be the highest above the ground. And when you're at the very bottom of the Ferris wheel, you'll be at the lowest uh, height above the ground. So when you ride a Ferris wheel, your distance in feet from the ground varies sinusoidally with time t. And what that means is as the wheel rotates, uh, if you were to do a graph of your distance from the ground as a function of time, your graph would look something like this. Suppose you start here at the very top, uh, and then the wheel is rotating. So if you start at the top, then you're going to start coming down as the wheel rotates. You'll bottom out when you're over here, and then you will, uh, as, as the wheel turns, your gondola, it'll move up in position, and you will be getting higher and higher above the ground. So... 
this is what's going to happen. And by the time you get back to the very top, you would have completed one rotation, which gives you one period of your sinusoidal model. And you can see that you could have, for example, a cosine model to model this situation if you're starting at the very top to begin with. And that's what this problem is about. When you ride a Ferris wheel, your distance, y of t in feet from the ground, varies sinusoidally with time t in seconds since the wheel started rotating. Suppose the Ferris wheel has a diameter of 50 feet. So here's the center of the Ferris wheel. And we know that the diameter of the Ferris wheel, as given in the problem statement, is 50 feet. So the diameter is 50 feet, which means the radius of the Ferris wheel, the radius will be 25 feet. Suppose the Ferris wheel has a diameter of 50 feet and its axle, the axle is uh, over here. This is where the axle is. This is the center of the Ferris wheel. Its axle is 30 feet above the ground. So the distance from the ground to the axle, which is the center of the circle, is 30 feet. So this distance here is 30 feet. So its axle is 30 feet above the ground. Five seconds after it starts, your seat is at its high point. So five seconds after the Ferris wheel starts rotating, this is where you are. This is where you are five seconds after the Ferris wheel starts to rotate. Five seconds after it starts, your seat is at its high point. So you're here at t is equal to five seconds. So you're here at t is equal to five seconds. The wheel makes two revolutions per minute. So every minute or every 60 seconds, you're going to do two revolutions. So how long does it take for you to complete one revolution? Uh, you'll be back here at this position 30 seconds later at time is equal to 35 seconds. 5 plus 30 is 35. You'll be back here again 30 seconds after that at time is equal to 65 seconds. So what do we want to do here? Uh, part A. Sketch the graph of function y. It'll look something like this. We're going to be more detailed with our sketch to help us do the second part of part A, which is to figure out the particular equation. In, the, in other words, write a sinusoidal model that would give you the height of your gondola above the ground as a function of time. And then once we have that, we can do part B. Write an equation for the derivative of the function that you find in part A. Uh, and then we can use that to answer the questions in parts C and D, and we'll take a look at that. So now we're ready, to we're ready to start the problem by doing part A, sketch the graph of the function y, which will tell us the height of your gondola, the car that you're riding in, above the ground, as a function of time as the Ferris wheel rotates. So reading the problem, as we just did, we know certain information. For example, we know this. Five seconds after it starts rotating, your seat is at its high point. So we know that at time is equal to five, you're going to be at the highest part of the Ferris wheel. At that time, how, how much, how, what is your height above the ground at that time? At time is equal to 5 seconds, the height of your seat will be 55 feet above the ground. 
because we can see that the axle, which is the center of the Ferris wheel, is 30 feet above the ground, and then the radius of the Ferris wheel is 25 feet, so 30 plus 25 gives 55. So let's make a table here. We're going to have time, and we're going to have the height of your seat above the ground as a function of time. So when time is equal to 5 seconds, your seat will be 55 feet above the ground. And I can plot this point on the horizontal axis. We have time measured in seconds. And on the vertical axis, we have height measured in feet. So we have the ordered pair 555, and I'll go ahead and plot that point right there. So now we know that, what else do we know? Reading the problem, we know that the Ferris wheel makes two revolutions per minute. So that's two revolutions every 60 seconds, which means we have one revolution every 30 seconds. And that's how we know that 30 seconds later, 5 plus 30 is 35 seconds, at time t is equal to 35 seconds, the Ferris wheel will have completed one revolution, which means your seat will once again be at the highest point above the ground. So we know that 30 seconds later, when time is 35 seconds, your seat once again will be back at the top of the wheel. So 35 seconds, 55 feet. So we're going to go ahead and plot this point here. And in fact, I know that 30 seconds after that, at time is equal to 65 seconds, once again, your seat will be at the highest point above the ground. So I'll plot another point there. So we've got that. So now, between 5 seconds and 35 seconds, your wheel, the wheel is turning, and your seat is going to do something like this. So let's go ahead and take a look at what's going on with your seat. And we're going to use maybe uh, blue for that. So as time goes on, we know that 35 seconds, it'll be back at the top. Now, if it takes 30 seconds to complete one full revolution, how long will it take to complete a half revolution? So it'll take 15 seconds to complete a half revolution. So at time is equal to 5 seconds, your seat is at the highest point above the ground. 15 seconds later, 5 plus 15 would be 20. At time is equal to 20 seconds, what would be the height of your seat at that time? Well, at that time, because the Ferris wheel had completed a half revolution, your seat would be at the very bottom of the wheel and that's the lowest point above the ground. At that point in time, what would be the height of your seat above the ground? So when the seat is at the very bottom of the wheel, we know that the radius of the Ferris wheel is 25 feet. And we also know that the axle of the Ferris wheel is 30 feet above the ground. So you would have to do 30 feet minus 25 feet to get that the, your seat would be 5 feet above the ground when it is at the bottom of the Ferris wheel. So at time is equal to 20 seconds, the height of your seat above the ground would be 5 feet. So I can plot the point 25. Now, if it takes 15 seconds to complete a half revolution, how long would it take to complete a quarter revolution? It'll take seven and a half seconds to complete a quarter revolution. So at t is equal to five seconds, your seat is at the highest point above the ground. Seven and a half seconds after that, 5 plus 7 and a half would be 12 and a half. At that point in time, 
your seat would be over here. Uh, I'm going to try to make that more prominent so you can see. This is where your seat would be. I just marked that in a red box. Uh, after the Ferris wheel completes a quarter revolution. At that point in time, what would be the height of your seat above the ground? At 12 and a half seconds, after the Ferris wheel starts turning, uh, the height of your seat above the ground would be at the same height as the axle, and it would be at 30 feet above the ground. So we will have 30 here. So I can plot the point 12 and a half 30, and that would be right here. Now, at time is equal to 20 seconds after the Ferris wheel starts turning, we know that the seat will be at the lowest point of the Ferris wheel. From there, it'll take another seven and a half seconds to complete a quarter revolution, which will take the seat back to the height of the axle. So, we know it takes 30 seconds to complete one revolution. It takes 15 seconds to complete a half revolution. It takes seven and a half seconds to complete a quarter revolution. So from the very bottom of the wheel, it'll take seven and a half seconds to get back to the height of the axle. So 20 plus seven and a half seconds will be 27 and a half seconds, and at that time, your seat will once again be at the height of the axle. So we have the point 27 and a half, 30. So right here is what we have. And we have enough points now to sketch one cycle of our graph. And this would be the graph that tells us the height of the Ferris wheel, not the Ferris wheel, but the height of your seat on the Ferris wheel as a function of time since this Ferris wheel starts rotating. Five seconds after the wheel starts rotating, your seat is at its high point. At t is equal to five, y of t is 55. So you start actually below the high point and you get there five seconds after the wheel starts rotating. So T represents the number of seconds since the wheel starts to rotate. T is time in seconds. Since the Ferris wheel starts to rotate, five seconds after it starts, T would be five. Your seat as your seat is at its high point of 55 feet above the ground. So you can see that we've done the first part of part A. Sketch the graph of the function y. And we have one cycle of the graph. And of course you can have another cycle of the graph. Uh, here we are at time is equal to 35 seconds. Another 30 seconds later your seat will be once again at the highest part of the Ferris wheel, 55 feet above the ground, halfway between 35 and 65 seconds. At time is equal to 50 seconds, it will be at the lowest part of the Ferris wheel, 5 feet above the ground, halfway between 35 and 50, 50 seconds. At uh, 42 and a half seconds, it will be at the height of the axle, it meaning your seat will be at the height of the axle. Halfway between 50 and 65 seconds, at 57 and a half seconds, your seat will once again be at the height of the axle. So here's another cycle of the graph. And what we want to do is we want to go ahead and write a sinusoidal model for this particular graph that you see. So how do we do that? That's the second part of part eight figure out the particular equation for y of t. How do we figure out 
what the parameters should be for the graph that you see. We want to write y is equal to c plus cosine of c plus a times cosine of b times x minus d or if we're using t, t minus d. Okay, so we want to figure out what the parameters a, b, c, and d should be. So I want you to think about that for a little bit and we will continue. To determine the values of the parameters a, b, c, and d, we have to go back to uh, what we learned yesterday and what we discussed at the very beginning of this lesson about how these parameters relate to characteristics of the graph. So for example, we have the midline axis or the sinusoidal axis for the graph at y is equal to 30. So c should be equal to 30 because y is equal to c gives us the equation of the sinusoidal axis. So we get y is equal to 30 plus. The parameter a tells us the amplitude of the graph. The amplitude of the graph is the distance from the midline axis either to a high point or to a low point. And here we have the amplitude and the amplitude would be 55 minus 30 or 25 feet so a would be 25 and then we have cosine of b times t minus the phase displacement before we look at uh, what the parameter d and then what the parameter b should be I want to discuss why we use cosine instead of sine here if you go back to the graph of the parent cosine function, it starts at a high point and it looks like this. If you look, go back to the graph of the parent sine function, it starts at a middle point and it looks like this. And if you look at our problem, since the seat that you're riding on starts at a high point at time is equal to 5, we're going to use cosine because we're starting at a high point. So now we have a phase displacement. Instead of starting at a high point when time is equal to 0, we start at the high point when time is equal to 5 seconds. So our phase displacement is 5 seconds. And for that reason, the parameter d would be 5. So now we have to figure out the parameter b. We know that the period of the function is equal to 2 pi divided by the absolute value of the parameter b, or I'll just write b because b is going to be positive. So this is equal to the period. For our particular problem, we know the period of our function. If you look at one cycle of the graph, you have one cycle of the graph completed every 30 seconds. So the period of our function is 30 seconds. So we know the period is equal to 2 pi divided by b. So we have 2 pi divided by b is equal to 30 seconds. So now we will solve for b by multiplying both sides of the equation by b and then dividing both sides of the equation by 30. So we have 2 pi divided by 30 is equal to b, and you can cancel the common factor of 2 that you have in the numerator and the denominator, and that will give you pi over 15 is equal to b. So that's the value of the parameter b, and we will have b is equal to pi over 15. So now we have y is equal to 30 plus 25 times cosine of pi over 15 times t minus d. That is our model that tells us the height of the seat above the ground as a function of time since the Ferris wheel starts to rotate.
the next part that we want to do is part B. Write an equation for y prime of t, which will give us the rate at which your seat's height above the ground is changing at a particular instant in time. It would give us the instantaneous rate of change of your seat's height above the ground as a function of time, and the units would be feet per second. So let's see how we can find y prime. We will have to find the derivative of the function y. So we need to find the derivative of our model from part A. And the important thing, thing for you to recognize is that here you have a sum. 30 is a constant function, so the derivative of the constant function 30 would be 0. So the derivative of y would be 0 plus the derivative of the second function here. So you really have to just find the derivative of the second function because the derivative of the first function is 0. So you have y prime of t is equal to 0 plus the derivative of the second function, which is a constant times this function. The derivative, if you have uh, g of x is equal to some constant k times f of x, the derivative of g would be the constant times the derivative of f. So really what we have to do now is just write 25 times the derivative of cosine of pi over 15 times t minus 5. And if you look at the function that I boxed in gold, we have a composition of two functions where the outside function is the cosine function and the inside function is what I am circling in green. So you will have to use the chain rule to find the derivative of the composition of the two functions there. So we will begin by taking the derivative of the outside function, which is cosine. The derivative of cosine would be negative sine. So we will have 25 times negative sine evaluated at the inside function of pi over 15 times t minus 5, and then using the chain rule, we will multiply by the derivative with respect to t of the inside function, pi over 15 times t minus 5. What is this derivative equal to? pi over 15 is a constant, so whenever you have a function that's a constant times another function, the derivative of that function will be the constant times the derivative of the function. So what is the derivative of t minus 5 with respect to t? The derivative of t is 1, the derivative of a constant is 0, so the derivative of t minus 5 with respect to t is just 1. So the derivative of pi over 15 times t minus 5 would be just pi over 15 times 1, or just pi over 15. So from here we get just pi over 15, so y prime of t would be multiply 25 times pi over 15, so you get 25 pi over 15 and of course you have a factor of a negative 1 here so that would be negative 25 pi over 15 times sine of pi over 15 times t minus 5 and you can reduce here 5 goes into 25 5 times, 5 goes into 15 3 times, so you get negative 5 pi over 3 times sine of pi over 15 times t minus 5. So this is the function for the derivative, and that's how you do part B. So we've done parts A and B. And now we're ready to take a look at parts C and D. When time is equal to 15, is the height increasing or decreasing, and how fast? 
So to answer that question, you can look at the derivative and you can evaluate the derivative at time is equal to 15 because that will tell you the instantaneous rate of change of your seat's height above the ground as a function of time measured in feet per second. I entered, uh, here's the, a table from Desmos for the derivative function. I'm using x instead of t, but here x is the same as t. It represents time. And I have the instantaneous rate of change of the seat's height above the ground as a function of time at various times. At, at, at time t is equal to 15, your seat, it has this rate of change for its height above the ground. And it's a negative value, which means the height of your seat is decreasing at this time at a rate of about four and a half feet per second. So you have negative 4.53 approximately, right? And the units here would be feet per second. So what does that mean? So we're looking at part C here. It's asking at time t is equal to 15, is y of t increasing or decreasing how fast? At that time, your height is decreasing. And how fast is it decreasing? It's decreasing at a rate of about four and a half feet per second. And if you look at the graph that we sketched from part A, telling you the height of your seat above the ground as a function of time, let's go to where 15 seconds is. So 15 seconds is right here, and this, is, would, this would be the height of your seat above the ground. And you can see from the graph from part A, that at that time, the graph is falling from left to right. The function from part A telling you the height of your seat above the ground is decreasing at that time, and that is why the derivative is negative at that time, and it tells you the rate at which the height of your seat is decreasing at that time. It is decreasing at a rate of about four and a half feet per second. So we've done parts A, B, and C, and now we're ready to take a look at part D. Part D is asking, what is the fastest the height is changing? Where is the seat when the height is changing the fastest? Now we take a look at part D. What is the fastest y of t changes? In other words, what is the fastest rate at which your seat's height above the ground is changing. Where is the seat when the height is changing the fastest? So we know that the derivative tells us the rate at which the height of the seat is changing with respect to time. So when the question is asking what is the fastest the height of the seat is changing, we want to find maximum values of the derivative function, which will tell us the fastest rate at which the, heights, the height of the seat is increasing. And we also want to find minimum values of the derivative function, which will be negative values, and they will tell us the fastest rate at which the seat's height is decreasing. So that would help us to answer the question, what is the fastest the height is changing? The next part of the question is, where is the seat when the height is changing the fastest? To help us do this, we're going to graph the derivative function. And I will show you the graph of not only the original function, but also the derivative function on the same set of axes, which I obtained by using Desmos. And of course, you should see that this is exactly the same thing that we had sketched earlier by hand. But now we just enter the model that we found into Desmos. And we're getting Desmos to do the graph for us. But you can see that as I'm erasing the graph of, that we had sketched earlier by hand, we're of course getting the same graph from Desmos. Everything is the same. And this is what we have. 
But now in addition to the graph of the function y of t, which is telling us the height of our seat above the ground as a function of time since the Ferris wheel started rotating, we also have the graph of y prime, which you see in blue uh, closer to the bottom of the screen. We're trying to answer the question in part D, what is the fastest that the height of the seat is changing, and where is the seat when the height is changing the fastest? But before we answer that, we would like to invest a little bit of time just to understand relationships here. So we know that we have the graph of y of t here, and we know we have the graph of y prime of t here in blue. And of course, on the time interval from t is equal to 5 to t is equal to 20, the seat is decreasing in height. And you can see that the graph of y is falling from left to right. When the function y is decreasing, its derivative is negative on that interval of time from 5 to 20 seconds. And you can see that the graph of y prime is below the horizontal axis on that interval of time. And you can see that, for example, at time is equal to 12.5, the value of the derivative is negative, indicating that the height of the seat is decreasing for those times. At time is equal to 15 seconds, as we saw earlier in Part C, the value of the derivative is negative because the height of the seat is decreasing at that time. On the time interval from 20 to 35 seconds, the height of the seat is increasing. So the graph of y of t is rising from left to right. And when you look at the graph of y prime of t on that interval of time, you can see that the graph of y prime, which I will uh, trace in black just for emphasis, is uh, above the horizontal axis, meaning it has positive values. When the function y is increasing, its derivative is positive on that interval of time. And for example, at time is equal to 27 and a half seconds, the derivative has a positive value indicating that the height of the seat is increasing at an approximate rate of 5.2 feet per second. So now that we understand that, we want to take a look at a couple of special points on the graph of the derivative function, uh, not having to do with part d, but just to understand. For example, on the graph of the derivative function at the time values 5, 20, 35, and so on, the value of the derivative at those times is equal to 0, which means those are the times at which the instantaneous rate of change of the height of the seat above the ground with respect to time is zero, meaning there is no change in the height of the seat at those times. What's happening at those times? The seat is either at the highest point of the Ferris wheel or at the lowest point of the Ferris wheel. In other words, at those times it is making the transition either from rising to falling, or from falling to rising. So at those instants in time, in a sense, the height is not changing. Now we get to the question, what is the fastest that the height is changing, and where is the seat when the height is changing the fastest? So we want to look for maximum values of the derivative function and as well as minimum values of the derivative function. At the maximum values of the derivative function, uh, the rate of change of the height with respect to time is going to be positive as the height of the seat is increasing. At the minimum values of the derivative function, the rate of change of the height of the seat with respect to time will be negative because the height of the seat is decreasing. So obviously the rate at which the height of the seat is changing 
is variable. For example, closer to the top of the Ferris wheel, as you start coming down, the height doesn't change very fast. And also closer to the bottom of the Ferris wheel, as you start approaching the bottom of the Ferris wheel and then going up from it, the height is not changing that fast. You would expect the height to be changing the fastest uh, when the height of the seat above the ground is at 30 feet uh, in the middle of the rotation, so to speak, uh, around these values of time. And do we see that with the derivative? You can see, for instance, that at time is equal to 12 and a half seconds. You can see that the graph of the derivative function has a minimum value. Uh, at 12 and a half seconds, the graph of the derivative has a relative minimum, a point on the graph that is lower than other points around it. So. At 12 and a half seconds, if you look at this table for values of the derivative function, the rate of change of the height of the seat above the ground with respect to time is about negative 5.2 feet per second, which means the height of the seat is decreasing at the fastest rate of about 5.2 feet per second. And the next question that we want to answer is, where is the seat when this is happening? We expect that it's going to be at the height of the axle. Uh, I guess we can say at the middle of the Ferris wheel, if you want to word it that way. And we can verify that by looking at the table for the function y of t. You can see that at time 12 and a half seconds, the height of the seat above the ground is at 30 feet. And in fact, we're looking at this point on the graph of the function where the seat would be at the level of the axle. And please take a look at the diagram here for the Ferris wheel. Where would the seat be at that time? It would be right here, and I will choose to work with black ink just for emphasis and put a little star where the seat should be at that time. And that's on the way down as it is going down. And that is why the rate of change is negative. So what is the fastest that the height is changing at that time? It, the height is decreasing at a rate of about 5.2 feet per second. Where is the seat when that is happening? Uh, it's uh, at a height of 30 feet above the ground as it is coming down. And then you can also take a look at this particular point on the graph of the derivative function, which is what we call a relative maximum. It is the highest point on the graph of the derivative function for time values around 27.5. And at this particular time, you can see from the table of values for f prime that the value of the derivative is about 5.2 about 5.2, but it's positive. So in fact, the magnitudes of these rates are the same, but at 12.5, it's negative, and at 27.5, it's positive. So that's one thing that we notice. At 27.5 seconds, the height of the seat is increasing at a rate of about 5.2 feet per second, which means the seat is going up at that rate. And where is the seat at that time? Uh, it is at a height of 30 feet above the ground. And you can see that on the graph of y of t. It would be this point right here. On the Ferris wheel, where would it be? Take a look. I'm going to mark where, would the, where the seat would be on the Ferris wheel at that time. Using a black star, it would be right here. So going back and reviewing, what did we do in this problem? We began by sketching the graph of y, telling us the height of the seat above the ground as a function of time. From the graph, we were able to write a sinusoidal model for the height of the seat above the ground as a function of time. 
we found values for the parameters a b c and d using for example amplitude period the equation for the midline axis and the phase displacement and then we used differentiation rules that we've learned to find y prime of t which gives us the instantaneous rate of change of the height of the seat above the ground as a function of time measured in feet per second and then we were able to use that to do part c by finding y prime of 15 we were able to determine that at that time the height is decreasing at a rate of about 4.5 feet per second and then we looked at part D what is the fastest that the height is changing we looked at maximum and minimum values of the derivative to answer that question and we also determined where the seat was when that was happening in today's lesson we were able to model a word problem with the sinusoidal model and we were able to use it to answer questions about the problem.